So just being honest with you from the get-go, this isn't the video that I'd intended to make this week. I was going to make a video about these, the new Beats Studio Plus earbuds, but that can wait for another week as I think we've got more pressing things to talk about. Now, it was just two weeks ago that we had WWDC, and rightly so, all the headlines were about Vision Pro. I understand that. I made plenty of videos about it, as I'm sure you know. And I would want to do is put that to one side for a moment and look at the rest of WWDC, and there wasn't an awful lot there for us. Because of all the resources that have gone into getting a, the headset ready, we knew that they'd been really struggling to develop things on time. So the iOS we got this year was pretty weak. There was nothing really at all apart from widgets in Mac OS 17. And even the watch OS that we heard was going to be radically different wasn't that big of a change. So that's the software done. Bearing in mind this is a developers conference, of course. Then we come over to hardware. Well, we got some new Macs. We got three or four new Macs. We got two Studio Macs, the Ultra and the Max. We got the brand new Mac Pro and the MacBook Air, which I'll come back to in just a minute, because that's what I really want to talk about. The two other Macs that I was talking about, the Studio Mac is seven grand, over seven grand starting price. And the Mac Studio is not cheap either. And they have got their niche. They have got their position for who they're meant for. And they're not mass market machines. So then we have to look at the other Mac that was released, the MacBook Air. And I was going to get one. And this is the nub of what I wanted to talk to you about and be honest with you about. I was going to get one. Running up to WWDC, I'd heard, we'd all heard, we we're probably going to get a new MacBook Air. And when they released it, sure enough, I put it straight in my basket. And then it sat there for a couple of days. And I was trying to think, why aren't I checking out? What was stopping me from checking out? Sat there and sat there. And in the end, I deleted it. And you know what? The reason that I didn't buy it was because it's not new. There was nothing there for me to buy that I could give content or make content about that was going to explain to you anything new, anything different. So I haven't bought one. I, now, I could have. It would have been an easy enough purchase. I'm not saying that the £1,400 that it costs isn't to be sniffed at. It's still a lot of money, but it is affordable. And equally, I could have done the old YouTuber's trick of buying a MacBook Air and then returning it after 14 days or before 14 days and get all my money back because it wouldn't be out of pocket at all. I would have made my content. Or I could also have bought one, kept it, and sold my M2 MacBook Air that I bought last year. But I just thought that was a little bit disingenuous to you. And the thing is that if we're going to go forward, I think it's important that you kind of trust me when I sit here and make videos. Look, I know my voice is a very small voice out there in the world of YouTube videos and Mac reviews and tech reviews. I get that. My voice is not that important. But equally, I have to live with myself and think if I'm making content, I want you to trust me in what I'm making content about, whether that's written blogs or videos here. And that's why I couldn't buy the 15 inch M2 MacBook Air. I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. And I just thought it really isn't for me. And then you have to kind of look at why Apple made the 15 inch MacBook Air in the first place. And look, I'm the biggest fan out there. I'm probably bordering on being a fanboy. We know that. But equally, I've got to call a spade a spade when I think I can see through it. And global sales of laptops have slowed right down. Post pandemic, everybody has bought the laptops that they needed when they were working from home. And Manufacturers are finding it very hard to sell units. Now, Apple have ridden the wave better than most, but still, they're struggling. So what did they decide to do? They decided to turn to their favorite, their best-selling MacBook, the MacBook Air, and just put a bigger screen on it. It's guaranteed to sell. 100% it's guaranteed to sell. And the time of year that they've released it, of course, is perfect because it's in the summer now. So it's ready for the back to school, back to college, back to university. If you've got to buy your kid a new laptop, that's going to be the one. And to be honest with you, if I was working with an older Intel Mac book of any kind, and I was looking to buy a new Mac today, the 15 inch MacBook Air is the one that I'd buy. I've seen them side by side. I was at the brand new flagship store in London, Battersea, uh, the Apple Battersea store over the weekend. So I've seen them side by side. And yes, the two inch screen does make a difference. Yes, the two inch screen is probably slightly bigger and makes more of a difference than I'd expected. But that is the only difference. And when you break down all of the specs on these machines, and I mean all of the specs, they are the same machine. You've got the same core count. You've got the same storage options. You've got the same modules inside for the media encoder engines. Even the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules are exactly the same. These machines are identical, bar two things. A slightly different speaker setup. You've now got some woofers on the new 15 inch and a slightly larger trackpad on there as well. But that's it. That's the only things that are different. And as for the speakers, I don't know about you, 
But whenever I'm using a MacBook Air, I'm using AirPods Pro or AirPods Max. This thing's often used in coffee shops, on trains, and you're portable with it. So you wouldn't be using the speakers most of the time. You would always be wearing some sort of headphone, I would have thought. So the speaker, as far as I'm concerned, blows itself out anyway. So the only thing you're getting is a slightly larger trackpad. And the trackpad is good enough on my 13-inch MacBook Air. Now, as I say, if you're coming from an older Mac, then yeah, I can totally understand the switch. But if you've got an M1 or M2 MacBook Air, don't buy this one. Don't. Save your money. Honestly, don't get caught up by these or caught out by these clickbait type videos that show you how wonderful it is, how new it is. Look, I could have made a video by now on this. And all it would have been doing is doing clever pan shots of the ports, showing you the keyboard, showing you the screen. By the way, the panel, even though it's two inches bigger, is exactly the same. I could have done that. I could have made a really beautiful looking video of the new 15 inch MacBook Air, but I might as well just say, look at last year's video that I've made or videos that I've made on the 13 inch MacBook Air. And if you like it enough, then think about buying a bigger screen if you really need one. But say if you've got an M1 or an M2 MacBook Air, there is no need to change. I bought the M2 last year because it was different. We had colors, it was a squared off design, the tapered wedge shape had gone and it was M2. So there was plenty that was new about it. That's what was justifiable for buying it. That's why I wanted to bring it onto the channel and talk about it. It was new and it was exciting, but this really isn't. You do not need to buy it. You honestly don't. Now, this is just me speculating, but I think we could possibly get an M3 iMac before the end of the year. And if we get that, that I will buy. That will be different. The iMacs have come out and they've only been M1 since the get-go. So to get an M3 iMac, that'll be really good. That I look forward to. And it's going to cost about the same sort of money as this new 15-inch MacBook Air as well. So I promise you, if that comes out, I will get it. It wasn't the money that was putting me off getting it. It was being honest with you. I've only actually watched two videos on the MacBook Air, one by Marquez on MKBHD and the other by Peter McKinnon. Marquez, I don't think I've ever seen, or rarely does he use, Geekbench results. But he put specs in there to pad out. I'm sure it was much I respect him, and I hugely respect the man. He can do no wrong in my eyes. But I'm sure he was looking and thinking, how can I make an eight minute video? What can I do? So he used Geekbench just to pad it out to the eight minutes. And if I look at Peter McKinnon, he actually covered two Macs, the Studio Mac and the MacBook Air in a six minute video and barely showed the Macs. It was a lifestyle video, beautiful, loved the video, but it didn't tell us anything about the Macs, particularly the MacBook Air and why not? Because there's nothing to talk about. And if that's two people at the top of their game that are on the embargo list and are getting sent it and they could have covered anything about it, they couldn't find anything new. What am I going to bring to the table? There is nothing new. So I just wanted to come on with this video this week and just try to say, look, don't be caught out. There are some disingenuous channels out there making videos, showing you this MacBook Air as if it's something new. It's only new if the tech you've got is old. If it's not, you do not need to change. I was so tempted, so tempted, but I'm really glad that I held back. There was something niggling away at the back of my mind that I didn't buy that 15 inch Mac. And now I know what it was. It was being honest with you. I want to bring you content that's refreshing. Like when I talk about these Beat Studio Buds, and I've got plenty to sell now, I promise you, but that could wait. I just needed to get this off my chest this week. It was gnawing away at me because I've seen so much content being made. And I bet you a lot of the people that are making content are gonna be sending that 15 inch MacBook Air straight back after they've made their content and earned some money on the clicks at your expense and then carry on as if nothing had happened. Well, that's not the way I want to be with you. I want to try and establish the fact that what I tell you is how I see it and how I feel about it. And I love Apple products. I love being up at Apple Battersea yesterday. It was a stunning place. I had a great day. The team up there are fantastic. But this Mac was not one that I wanted to bring to you and bring onto this channel. And one other thing as well, just thinking, just talking things through with you, the USP of the MacBook Air, the place that it sits within the Mac ecosystem is portability. At 13 inches and lightweight, it is super, super portable. Being that little bit bigger and a little bit heavier, and you don't even get a better battery life on it. The battery is bigger, but that's offset by the bigger screen. So you still get the same reported 18 hours of battery life. The battery life is stunning anyway, on the M1 or on the M2. Again, it's losing what its niche is. This device, so I'll keep looking and pointing down there because that's where my M2 MacBook Air is at the moment. But the MacBook Air, it's the reason for it being was because of being portable and at 13 inches and lightweight and portable and super powerful. If I didn't run this channel, I could do everything I need to do throughout the rest of my working day from 
the M2 MacBook Air. It's that good. I really don't need anything else. And I think I've mentioned before that I've actually started using the M2 MacBook Air in place of my 27 inch iMac when I'm here in the studio recording because it's better, it's quicker than that 2015 Intel iMac. It's that good. So they are brilliant machines and I know this 15 inch is gonna sell, but unless you're running old tech, walk away from it, save your money. Keep the money in your account for once. You won't often hear me saying don't buy something, but this is not a Mac that you need to buy. And that's pretty much all I had to say this week. Uh, I'll put some B-roll in here. I'll show my M2 MacBook Air from last year just because. But you already know about it. You know what it looks like. You know how good it is. You know how performance laden it is. It can do anything you need of it. It'll last all day, but if you've already got one, don't think you need to trade up. You really don't. By the way, this is the part of the video, in fact, probably early on, I should have said, oh, uh, subscribe to me, I need your sub, and I do. But the truth of the matter is, unless you feel I've offered you anything in this video, again, it's not fair, it's not honest. I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe to me if you don't think I've bought you anything that's, uh, that deserves a sub. On the other hand, if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoy this informal way that I'm chatting to you and the opinions that I've given you, and hopefully the fact I might have saved you 1,400 pounds or dollars as well, then a sub would really, really be lovely. But that's all I've got for you this time. That was all I wanted to say. It's just been nagging away at me. There was a reason I didn't buy the M2 15-inch MacBook Air, and it's because I didn't need it. And there's a very good chance you don't either, as good as it is. So that's the video for this week. As I say, next week, we'll be making a video about these, the Beats Studio Buds Plus. I've got quite a lot to say about them, and not necessarily all good, but that's for next week. Thanks for watching this one, guys. I'll see you very soon.